Okay, so I sound incredibly tired during the entire first part of this video, and I'm genuinely sorry about that. It's just been, um, I don't know, man. It's been nuts. I didn't want to re-record, uh, but I promise I get more excited throughout the rest of the video. Hope you enjoy. Risk of Rain is a retro-style 2D side-scrolling roguelike class-based time trial RPG beat-em-up shoot-em-up hack-and-slash with minor platforming elements. That sounds like a mouthful, but all of the elements of those genres that Risk of Rain borrows from complement each other extremely well. If class-based roguelike shooting platformer is a description with more brevity that entices you, I recommend you go and buy this game right now. It's only like $10, so just don't eat for a day, you'll be fine What's the worst that can happen. I will be talking an awful lot about the game, and I'll even touch on its meta, so if if you like to experience games fresh and without a helping hand, you should click off the video before the intro plays and get it for yourself. It is just such a one and only type of game, there's really nothing quite like it which plays entirely to its benefit. I already did a short review of this game in my Steam Autumn Sale video, but it's been such a reliable game for me to fall back on that I figured it deserved its own video before the sequel comes out. This is that video, and if you want to hear more, you're welcome to, but I recommend you go and buy this game right away anyway. This video should also serve to people who just got the game and want to learn more about it, so let's just get into the details. The classes are incredibly varied in this game. They all have either unique ideas, gimmicks, or a playstyle that their entire kit is built around. The items in this game are unique as well, they do different things that other roguelikes would not be able to pull off. Oh, um, I should touch on the roguelike elements because they're really difficult to explain and they're pretty extremely cherry-picked, so... Uh, death is permanent, just like real life. You get items that you accumulate throughout your run and find an end destination in a stage that leads to a new area. Not as much like real life. The stages themselves are not randomly generated, but there is a large selection of stages from one area that the game can pull from. Each area has a cool and exclusive thematic from the other areas in the game, and the first stage you load into can only be from two areas, but the second stage you load into in a run will only be from another select set of areas, exclusive to the second stage. You'll never get a first stage area on your second stage. Although the stages are not randomly generated, the items, chests, capsules, drones, shrines, HP shrines, minion shrines, shop, and end portal are from a select set of locations. It's not quite as predictable as the outcome of your 7th grade science fair project, but you'll normally be able to just check certain locations for the teleporter if you recognize the stage. There are spawn locations, and the list of things I just went through plus more will all spawn in any of those locations. The difficulty you choose on your class select screen is only your beginning difficulty. The longer you take, the more difficult the game will become, supposedly because... Oh shit, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn it. Supposedly because it's raining. You'll always have to make decisions about circling back to those chests for more items or just go into the next area earlier to avoid the difficulty ramping up some more. You're risking the rain. Get it? <laughs> How about now? Oh shit. Fucking... Here goes my control. I don't know why I'm feeling so violent today. Maybe I should... Fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Moving on! I guess we'll start from the beginning. Uh, you load up the game, you select your class, and you're dropped into a stage. You'll start with $25, which is exactly enough to open up a first tier chest, gamble away until your family abandons you, or you can buy two and a half copies of Risk of Rain. Killing enemies that spawn will give you gold and experience, which you can spend to buy more copies of Risk of Rain. Leveling up will grant you max HP and damage. Every character has four abilities, a primary fire, two abilities, and an extra powerful one. Kind of like an ultimate, but on like a way lower cooldown. The best classes have some sort of synergy with their kit. Guess which ones those are? All of them! Another thing that you might notice is that the game is hard. Like, ridiculously hard. Not in a cheap way, either. Um, you'll almost never get one shot and die instantly, like other games in the genre. And every kit has some form of escape or way to kite the enemies until your health regens enough to take them on. You can't kite forever though, because platforms aren't infinite, and the scaling difficulty means eventually your enemies will outclass you and it'll become really difficult to take them on. One thing to take note of is that items you take in each run are very important. While you don't have a whole lot of control over them, you usually have more control than in other games like Binding of Isaac, Flint Hook, or Spelunky. You have far more options at your disposal, and the shop three item system will allow for greater player choice. Additionally, there are shrines that start cheap, but get more expensive each time you use them. Don't blow all your money on them, that way you can have enough left over to buy copies of Risk of Rain. The shrines have a chance to not give you any items at all, but some items, like the dice, capitalize on that by giving you an extra crit chance for every shrine you fail. There are also imp shrines, where if you kill five imps who run away quickly enough, you're guaranteed an item. 
More expensive chests will give you better items, usually, and drones are anywhere from $40 to $800 by late game. $800 is enough to buy 80 copies of Risk of Rain. Repairs can be three or four times as expensive as that, so you usually want to keep a drone repair kit for your active item if you can find one, and even if you only have one or two drones, that thing is insanely helpful. There are multiple types of drones as well. Multiple kinds of damage dealing drones, each with their own form of ammunition. Not that you have to collect, just, you know, one's a bullet, one's a rocket, one. Sometimes you can add rockets. It's, that's an item, whatever. Uh, and a healing drone. A healing drone is your best buddy in the whole game. Every item you collect goes towards your build, and it's usually good to choose something that synergizes not just with your other items, but with your class as well. And man, I have a lot to say about the classes. Um, I'm gonna go over them as quickly as I as I can, so skip to this time in the video if you don't want to hear this massive segment on what each class does, what their abilities are, my general thoughts on each of them, and which items you should keep an eye out for them. Uh, otherwise, I guess I'll see you in a couple minutes hopefully I don't know how long it's gonna take the commando's primary fire is two shots have an infinite range his X is a shot that damages and knock back all enemies in front of you infinite range your C is a long duration dodge roll that makes you immune for that duration and your ultimate type thing is a several shot combo that stuns on every shot meaning it'll stun another enemy if the knockback from it causes them to go behind each other. You can also shoot both ways if there are enemies on both sides of you. He has a good all rounder class. Abilities combo well, he's simple and easy to learn and infinite range and near infinite kiting. Build anything on him and it'll probably do well. Probably. Projectiles and drones are especially good. The Enforcer's primary fire is a high knockback, low rate of fire spread shotgun. His X knocks the small AoE of enemies really far backwards, dealing 210% damage. His C is a toggleable ability, 4 second cooldown. It'll plant your shield on the ground and give you slowed movement speed, no damage taken from the front, and increased attack speed. Your ultimate type ability is a super long range grenade launcher that stuns enemies in a large AoE, bounces around, and deals 250% damage. He is super awkward, clunky, and weird to use. Enemies are far faster than you with your shield up and will hit you from behind when you can't fight back or knock them away. Might be somebody's jam, but not mine. Uh, I don't know what recommended items. Uh, I don't play them at all. Bulky items? Confusion is good. Bandit's primary fire is semi-automatic. He's got a short range grenade with narrow AoE on both sides of the detonation. He has an ability that gives him increased movement speed. He becomes untargetable for three seconds or whenever he uses an ability or primary fire, and he stuns slash surprises enemies whenever you come out of it. His V is a hard hitting shot that takes a short delay before firing. It deals 600% damage and resets all of Bandit's cooldown if you kill an enemy, most importantly his movement is C. He just feels like a worse version of Commando, I'd rather play him, but his movement ability is unique and fun if you play entirely around it. Um, I recommend Fireman's Boots, the one that makes you leave fire at your feet is busted, and move speed and damage on on-hit items like barbed wire and uh, the, the poison spreading one, that one's also. The Huntress can move while firing. There's a short delay between the button and it firing, and she can fire one direction and move in an entirely different one. Her X is an axe that deals 300% damage on the first enemy hit, but increases for 30% per bounce, bouncing up to four times. Spam this like copy pasta. Her C is a short blink that isn't affected by gravity. It's good for making jumps and kite mix-ups. And her V is an explosive arrow that drops six smaller bombs upon impact. The Huntress has basically infinite kite. She's got really strong kite, but weak mobility, high burst damage, but low sustained damage, and not much CC or knockback. She's really fun. You can use any ability while moving, and she's got really good survivability for a DPS class, but overall, less damage than a DPS class. Um, any move speed items or fireman's boots are also very good here. Mortars, missiles, projectiles, and drones, please. Also, anything to give her CC. Chance to stun, chance to freeze on hit, slowing enemies on hit is especially good. And th that's it. Han D, hand, or giant robot man is a... he's a robot. His Z is a super mega punch. Uh, he gets a small AoE, it's a large knockback, it's really slow. His X is an auto-targeting drone for each enemy that you kill, which stack. They deal large damage to an enemy and heal Han for a majority of the damage dealt. Your C is makes you overclock and increases your attack speed plus your stun chance and your ultimate is an ability, it's a hammer swing, it's a large wind up time, it knocks enemies up real high and deals 400% damage. Han's X ability is, um, he's the reason I didn't want to do this all in one take but that's the only way I'm going to get this out in any reasonable time stand. So, um, anyway, he has no mobility, he's a unique character that's really hard to learn. Um, Lifesteal, healing items like meat chunks and damage over time, anything that will bulk you up as well. He's he's a really like high sustain class, but he's he doesn't have a whole lot of damage. I don't know. He's hard, man. But he's fun. The engineer has a super unique primary fire. He gets three bombs that detonate upon impact or a second bounce. His X are mines that stack, they're gonna charge every four seconds. His C is an auto lock ability with a lots of damage, and his turrets 
are on his V, they can charge every 40 seconds, he can stack up to two turrets and 20 mines. He's a builder class. He's really fun, but challenging, just because sometimes you won't get the right levels for him. He can set up an area before activating a portal and just watch him dominate as he stands from above, raining grenades down on peeps and firing seas on cooldown. Uh, out of combat items are really good on him. Extra healing out of combat, extra move speed out of combat, stuff like that. Uh, he's, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time actively fighting, but just kind of letting his mines and stuff do work for him. So the miner's primary fire is a higher rate of fire melee strike. A little bit of knockback, but a long suit stun, meaning it interrupts enemies' attacks and it has really high damage. Um, your X is a channeling charge. It scales damage with how long you charge it. It goes through enemies and makes yourself invulnerable. It's affected by gravity. 600% damage at max charge. Your C knocks yourself backwards, stunning enemies in a narrow but long AoE in front of you, dealing 200% damage and becoming immune while dashing. Your V, you jump in the air and you fire three blasts straight down. The Miner is my personal favorite class in the game. You have to give lots of thoughts to your movements as all your abilities are around the same cooldown, so if you spam them you won't have anything to do for a solid 5 seconds. You employ a lot of hit and run tactics with this guy. He's also a good all rounder, but movement speed items are baller. First aid kit gives you a delayed heal which is very good, barbed wire, poison on hit, and drones and projectiles are also exceptional on Miner. Sniper's primary fire requires the most explanation. Basically, he fires a high damage shot with a long pseudo stun. The second part, um, you time your Z press just right to have your next shot do crazy damage. I think it's a free crit. Your X is a channeling charge shot to deal huge damage. Literally. At max charge, it deals 2000% damage. Your C is a super long flip mobility, it's on a shortish cooldown, uh, and your V, you target the most dangerous enemy on screen, every shot, every shot will now crit on that enemy until it's dead. Gain 100% crit chance, basically. Untarget for a 10 second cooldown, kill the enemy for a 10 second cooldown. Sniper is my second favorite class in the game. He's got a unique and fun gimmick. Uh, your X and your V damage will knock down half of most bosses' health, one shot in the other half. Um, your ideal situation is you find a second platform that is far separated but on the same elevation as most of your enemies, and you just rain hellfire down upon them. He's better in co-op rather than solo play, but get heal on crit, heal on crit, heal on crit items are so fucking good. You heal out of combat, um, the stutch watch or any active item that slows or stops time is also pretty busted because it doesn't change your charge, um, your charge duration. And your offensive drones are also very good because they scale off of your base damage and sniper has pretty high base damage. On kill items are also pretty good. The Akrid's primary fire is a multi-hit melee, high rate of fire, and it poisons enemies and stacks the poison onto them. Your X is a narrow but long AoE that stuns enemies in front of you, 220% damage. Your C gives you big move speed. You leave acid down underneath you and you deal damage over time and slows enemies through it. Hang off a rope after applying it to an area. And your V is a projectile. It would rapidly deteriorate the health of the first enemy hit, then spread to two more enemies after one second. The Acrid can be really fun, but he requires a really unique playstyle as well. He's all about damage over time, but the primary damage over time abilities are on nearly 20 second cooldowns. Uh, trap a bunch of enemies in your C acid by stunning them with X. Uh, get move speed, get alien head for CDR. Uh, the poison on hit item is pretty good, fittingly. The mercenary play is a lot like Marth and melee. He's got a low rate of fire, disjointed melee attacks as his primary. He jumps in the air and interrupts enemy attacks, dealing two to three hits of damage. Um, your C is a dash. You deal damage and pass through enemies. If you hit an enemy, you can dash again in the same direction or not. If you hit enemies again, you can dash one more time but only up to that amount of times. Your V, you become untargetable and hit one enemy six times for extra damage. Mercenary is ridiculously fun if you master the mechanics. He's got low base health but really high base regen. Getting the hang of the dash is really fun. It obliterates a lot of bosses and if you want a combo character, this is the guy to go. Get lifesteal, get barbed wire, get poison and hit, get meat chunks, and get first aid kit. Promise you, you can't do wrong with this guy if you know what you're doing. The loader's primary fire is a 3 hit combo, it's a high rate of fire melee, his third hit deals extra damage and knocks up enemies. If you use your X, you'll gain a shield with doubles your health for 3 seconds. Um, you see, your fire your hand, if it collides with an enemy it'll stun them for a very long time and pull you towards them, if it collides with terrain it'll pull you towards it, and if you place a beacon at your feet with your V, you can grapple to that. If you recast the, 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 the beacon ability, it will place a second beacon and deal multi-hit electric damage in between the two beacons. Use your grapple to extend the distance between beacons, the only character with essentially invincibility slash immunity that you can act during, abuse that, and uh, barbed wire is good. Extra DPS is good too, so drones, projectiles, etc, fireman's boots, he's really burst oriented. Chef can boomerang a butcher's knife in front of him. It crits if it hits him on the way back um, to, to, to Chef. After a short delay, he can deal damage in an extra long AoE with his X. His C, he gains a short boost of movement speed and tars any enemies he pass through. Tarred enemies takes extra damage from your X. And your V is basically an upgrade thing. So, if you upgrade your Z, you'll send all your knives out in a circle. If you upgrade your X, you'll just do extra damage, and I think it increases the range. 
um, and your C will gain the move speed boost for longer if you upgrade that. As you can see, Chef is another reason I didn't want to do all these in one take, but basically, Chef is incredibly fun. The upgrade mechanic and having to give thoughts into which abilities are more useful to you at that exact given time is actually really nice. The tower mechanic is something special that I appreciate, and maximizing that damage is really fun and rewarding. Get heal on crit. It's more OP on Chef than it is on the crit-oriented class. Like, seriously. Um, barbed wire, poison on hitter grid, fireman's boots, and you, if you get those four items, it's just GG. Like, seriously, it's just, it's over. It's over if you get those four items. And, uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> God help me. Okay, wow, that was a lot of math and a lot of explanation, and I, I just I hope that gives you an idea of who you might want to play and who might fit your playstyle best. Um, the best classes are the ones that are especially good at combat, because if you haven't noticed by now, this game has a hard focus on it. There's significantly less platforming in this game, which is so nice. Its combat is so spot on, tight, and rewarding that it probably has the best combat of any other roguelike game ever played or mentioned, and that includes Flint Hook, whose combat system I actually adore. The deep combat system is really what you play Risk of Rain for, and everybody that have ever brought aboard the Risk of Rain hype train agrees that the classes in the combat are the tightest and best parts of its entire design. So let's say you're sick of all the classes, the level design has gotten repetitive for you, and you've beaten the game 50 something times now. In come artifacts. Artifacts are several different, I guess, gameplay modifiers that you can mix and match to create custom games or extra hard challenges. Stuff like 500% damage but 10% health, locking a random skill every minute, having enemies explode upon death, chests no longer spawning but some items dropping items on death, having items no longer be random, and way more effects are the same or higher caliber than those, which can mix up your gameplay experience for even longer in a roguelike with multiple classes and co-op. So replayability just isn't an issue. Really, it's not. That's why I called it a reliable game. I've been playing it since before release and I keep coming back to it for week-long binge sessions where I remember just how much I love the damn thing. This review has mostly been boring because I can't write jokes about something I love so dearly. This is just an honest to god recommendation and me yelling every single reason I think you should buy this game in your general direction. People have asked me like, man, that must get kind of repetitive after a while, to which I respond, here's a super quick answer, it hasn't. Like, once you get the penultimate level, you're given a choice, okay? Just, just as, as this is one of my last selling points, because I'm, fuck, I'm hyped. Okay, this is unscripted now. F f I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready, raring to go. <laughs> Once you get to the second to last level, you're given a choice. Um, you warp to the final level, or you can warp back to the first level with all of your items and upgrades. You can return to the final level at any end point of any repeated level, and I believe you can repeat this cycle infinitely. In any other game, this wouldn't be a real choice. Even if the enemies scale to your current power level, risk of rain's risk of rain mechanic makes this a greater choice. I can either make the boss way harder than he is now, but become really powerful on my own and risk my life for longer, or I can fight him at a lower difficulty while I've still got lesser items. Luckily, the layout of the final level encourages exploration as well, and we're back to being fucking scripted here, boys, because I, 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 I wrote fucking ad lib it from this point to this point, so t kill me, y'all. Just kill me, kill me while you have the chance, why don't you? So the layout of the final level encourages exploration as well. It has locked rooms that you can see from other angles of the ship, and you get to open so many chests. Um, the final boss itself is... Uh, well, <laughs> it's a health sponge. He's stupid easy if you're playing certain classes who can maintain their distance, but damn near impossible for melee classes. Also, having the two screen devouring worms can really fuck up a run, even if you're able to take care of the humanoid part of it. You can also find this railgun in the ship that you can spend money and teleport it to the boss room. It certainly helps. I don't have a whole lot else to say about the base game. I think I've given it plenty of positives, and the mechanics are mostly entirely solid, lame dick joke. So I'm going to try my best to bring up the negatives in this game before I continue on with the artistic choices and merits the game has, because spoilers, everything I have to say about that is positive. My plan is to dwell on the negatives for as long as I can, because I want to counterbalance the putrid levels of positivity that I'm dumping on the game. Also because it's a lot easier, it's, it's much easier to be funny if you're negative. Not that I'm funny anyway. <laughs> Co-op is dog shit hard to set up. Seriously, I've gotten online co-op to work once. Local co-op is a bit easier, but still not easy, really. Um, the UI and settings are also really difficult to work around, and I wish the pause menu had a bit more thought put into it. It is way harder than it should be just to swap some controls around. I also hear that if your game goes on for long enough, the difficulty will warp back around from ha 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 back to very easy again. I've never actually seen this happen in my 300-something hours in the game, but that's not something that I can really get behind. One of the things that makes your experience so much fun is the time trial 
trial type deal, where you have to make decisions to sacrifice items for lesser difficulty or vice versa. Now, like I said, I still haven't experienced it, so it's not some damning flaw that the game has, but I still think it would be way better without it. The rain mechanic is also not very well implemented into the world. It just kind of serves its function of raising the difficulty. Like, what if the gain was actually an element in the game, the rain, it was an element in the game, and made some surfaces behave almost slippery or have certain lengths of rope be unclimbable? Now, I'm not a game designer, obviously. That's why I'm making a YouTube video and I'm not currently designing a game, so Maybe that would be even worse than a sub one dimensional mechanic, but they have water physics in the game. Make the water level rise and make certain things only accessible with the jetpack also accessible with the slow fall of the water. Or touching on the level design, make some slopes, some non right angles, and have the water push you down them if it rains hard enough, maybe? Holy shit, looking back, what was that pop? Was that, I think I was just that loud. Oh no. Class balancing is also not exactly the best. Some classes are just better than others in a solo situation, which will probably be most of your time with the game anyway. Like, let's be real, none of us have any friends. The engineer fits into a weird place where he's mostly good in a multiplayer setting. But if you get just the right maps and just the right teleporter locations, he will 100% dominate and give you a free win, but overall he's just really unreliable. So he's the builder class equivalent of your dad. The Huntress is, sadly, a joke now, which puts anything even the most clever of writers in a really moody lighting could say about her to absolute humiliation. Her damage was nerfed, and while that's not the worst thing in the world, there are just other people who do her job better now, unless you get just the right set of items on her to turn your X ability into your primary fire, and get some serious lifesteal and heal on hit item actives. Miner still has some issues, where if you make one mistake, you're pretty much dead, or at least a sitting duck for a decent 5 seconds, which makes you as good as dead. He's really high risk and really high reward, but it's way too easy to back yourself into a corner if you don't get ahead on items early. If you fall behind him in items, you're just screwed. On any class, actually. It's a lot like going to a hair salon or living in Texas. You know you're gonna die anyway. Oftentimes, no matter how skillful you are at the game, uh, games like Flint Hook, Gungeon, or The Binding of Isaac make it possible to win the game without a single item, but that's actually impossible in Risk of Rain. Seriously, the game relies incredibly heavy on item power because the scaling difficulty isn't anything that actively changes besides some number getting bigger. You're going to get hit at some point. You can't kite enemies forever, even as the Huntress, so you're really forced to raise your power level. It comes across as extremely cheap, like Costco cheap, and as a result makes actually improving your proficiency with the game feel really unimportant and almost useless for your time. It especially doesn't help that some items are actually useless on certain classes, though I will I, I will cut Risk of Rain some slack, because having a class-based roguelike is guaranteed to have some items that are useless to you on some runs, and they do their best of adding items that are useful to gameplay patterns which every class shares. You can also just get stages that will ruin a really good run halfway through. Chef relies, and for example, Chef relies on enemies who don't have teleportation or high movement speed to be incredibly effective. If he gets the fucking lava level, guess what? All that work you did is now gone because it is riddled with these fire enemies who shimmy around you and switch which side of you they're on as well as these little drone guys who will persist on you in the exact same way. Your counterplay for them is just on a pretty long 4 second cooldown you see and then your X to stun them and knock them back and that's just one example of the stage selection messing up your character. Level design can mess up some other classes really, really badly. Whatever. Regardless, oftentimes runs are not decided by player skill, but by player luck, and we all know how bad that can get. Or, I assume so, since you must have had pretty bad luck to end up on this video at all. Um, the item problem is also somewhat mitigated by the fact that the game throws tons of them at you, and it's theoretically possible to grind enemies until you get enough gold to get double digit items on every stage. There's still an opportunity cost if you do that, because yeah, you're more likely to get a good item if you grind, but if you have the right luck, those could all end up being good items. So it's it's like <coughs> Oh fuck. <coughs> it's like it's like Russian roulette, except once you get the good item, the game ends and it's just sweet release from there. It's it's still no more of an effective strategy because Unlike Russian Roulette, the time you spend doing all those things raises the difficulty and quickly. The heads-up display prioritizes all of the wrong information. Just like that toddler who told the teacher he was allergic to bees when the teacher asked if we were allergic to anything when a kid brought brownies with nuts in them for his birthday. Eat shit, Greg. Nobody liked you in kindergarten. Risk of Rain is just so clearly preoccupied with showing you all your items 
on screen. Granted, that can be helpful information, but in any situation where you might need to know which items you have, pausing would work at least equally well. You would usually have that amount of time. A lot of the information you might be able to get to know from knowing your items can be displayed in the current HUD, like how the shield item changes the color of your health bar. Like, at least if you put the items in the pause screen, you could dedicate the screen face that they're currently taking up to your HP, your cooldowns, your XP bar, or even which segment of your chip bag it recommends you blindly grasp at next, which is far more important than which items you have currently anyway. Like, oh my god. Whatever, it's incredibly likely that you won't notice you're taking as much damage as you are, and so many game overs are just a result of you not having the information of how much health you have, or having some cooldown reduction item that you got for the first time, so you forget that you have that ability back already. Your HUD is just so unhelpful, it gives you no heads up about anything, to which I would respond, look, you see that? That is a dictionary! Fucking read it. I guess it adds to the difficulty of the game, but see my desync review as to why frustrating and cheap difficulty awards you bagel points. Bagel! Zero, zip, nada, you get fucking donut points for making your game difficult is it isn't something that you're motivated to overcome. Instead of just learn to work around, like a high school janitor learns to tune out and just wipe the shit off the stairs. Except, more analogous, he trips on the shit and fucking dies because his HUD got in the way. I think this is the most damning flaw of Risk of Rain as a whole, and there are just so many simple, elegant solutions that it makes me want to write emo poetry. Like, first step. Put the damn items in the pause menu. Second step, have a button and or a toggle to show an opaque version of the HUD in a much larger detail over things. Or step two, might make things super messy. So step two A is reduce visual clutter. The game is just so incredibly visually noisy. There are hordes and swaths and armies of enemies that all have overlapping effects and animations, conflicting health bars, and even the color of the enemies is a problem. Each map has a mono or achromatic color palette that still manages to be messier than a baby eating spaghetti or cake for the first time purely because it still has the same resolution as the foreground. All of the elite monsters glow and the whole screen just gets filled with enemies, bosses, their health bars, their effects, the background, its effects, the environment, its effects, attack animations, their effects, text, item effects, missile trails, gold, extra gold, XP, orb, chests, their costs, more item effects, more item effects, more fucking item effects. There are also sometimes items sitting around, but always all of your character's attack animations and animation smears. It's incredibly messy. Now, that's not to say it looks bad necessarily, just messy. So I don't mean this game looks messy aesthetically. Please don't take it that way, because I think it has a really unique and wonderful visual style, and I swear I'm done with the negatives. Okay, I got too heated. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's really hit or miss for a lot of people. I adore it, and I like how they added tons of motion streaks and fluid animations and still maintain this pixelated style. Um, the pixels will overlap each other even, and not be strictly placed on a square grid, but that's really charming to me. I like it, you might not. Um, I don't think there's any disagreement that the animation fits the art style though. It's fluid, it's clear, but it still has few enough frames to give it a retro-ish feel. Everything about the game from a visual and artistic design standpoint is to give it like a future retro aesthetic, like science fiction retro, which is something that appeals to me as bizarre as that is. Like really, future retro sounds almost as conflicting as an HOA and anything resembling agreement or peace. The soundtrack though, on the other fucking planet, is undoubtedly phenomenal. It also has that conflicting but charming science fiction and retro atmosphere, which has been playing for this entire video. Not the transitions, but over me talking. Um, the soundtrack is all over the place too, but in a good way, not in an I have epilepsy way. Um, if that joke was too edgy for you, tough shit, because the soundtrack gets to be edgy as your little sister's favorite band as well. It's got punch, it's got dynamics, it's got chill, it's got immersive, orchestral, and sonic sweeps of brilliance that somehow maintain a bit-crushed and future space adventure aura. The soundtrack reeks and oozes and is covered in all of this slimy, icky shit called style. I love it. It's almost um, similar to Deus Ex or Duet if you've ever played that masterpiece of a mobile game, or um, as close as you can get to a masterpiece from a mobile game, which I guess is just like a 7.5 out of 10 for any other platform. Um buy the soundtrack. They don't have it on vinyl yet, the aesthetic version anyway, but supposedly they're making it, they deserve your money, and Chris... C can't pronounce his name, is a god among men. 
The art direction in Risk of Rain never loses a sense of identity, which is more than what I can say for most other games, if I'm being 100% honest. And what reason would I have to lie to you? It's not like I have any semblance of sense or structure throughout this video. I'm just too excited to share this shit with more people, so please, go buy it, now. What are you waiting for? Some grandiose ending to this multimedia skid mark on YouTube? I don't have the writing talent for that, and I don't even know if you have the attention span for it. I guess, I guess if you made it this far, I might as well plug my shit. Um, so, I have a Twitter. It's in the description. I don't tweet often, but when I do, it's guaranteed to at least make you think about keeping Twitter open. And if you enjoyed this verbal equivalent of regurgitated and disappointing oatmeal, then subscribe to be notified of more, whatever it was. Also, ring the bell. I won't hear you over the sound of how much of a depressed, cold mug of hot chocolate I am, but maybe in some other timeline where I'm happy I could hear it. I appreciate y'all. Here's some sad indie shit, because that's the vibe I'm on. If my closing lines and consistent use of self-deprecation is a crutch, nope. Actually, not even a crutch. A, a wheelchair for comedy wasn't clear enough for you. And I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm ever gonna change. Started raining, I guess even our climate agrees with me That I don't deserve happiness or coping mechanisms I deserve to lay out in the cold and freeze And that's just fine I love the colder temperatures, I think they're so divine yeah, that's just fine. I'd rather rest out there than be in here and be alive.